Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, Nicole and I have been traveling to South America for about four months now. Most recently, we've been in Ecuador, and last week we were in Puerto Lopez checking out the beautiful blue-footed boobies. This week, we're in Cuenca, and we're gonna be checking out all the sites tomorrow, but today is a special day here at the market. We're gonna be able to participate in a special, traditional cleansing procedure known as Olympia. Okay, I think we found the ladies who do Olympias. I think they're the women behind us. Olympia is like a traditional Andean medicinal cleansing. It's meant to cleanse you like spiritually and physically. So from what we understand, what happens in Olympia is you're gonna sit in the chair and then the women here are going to use like herbs and oils, medicinal products, um, to basically like cleanse you spiritually, mentally by like hitting you with things, rubbing things on you. I don't really know. We're gonna see because Miko's gonna give it a try in a second here. Um, but the idea is like to cleanse you spiritually and physically. And from what we understand, it's actually something that's done like as almost like a maintenance program, like a health maintenance program. It's not meant to be done like only when you're ill. So many Ecuadorians uh, partake in this tradition, as you can see, because there's ladies behind me here perform it a couple days a week here at this market. So the knowledge to do Olympia is passed down generation to generation. So the women who are here would have been trained by their mothers to perform this treatment. <laughs> Thank you. I feel refreshed. All the bad energies gone. That was quite an experience. I love the the smell of like whatever herbs or things that they were using. And then I did not expect that there to be a full like massage too. Um, that was really nice. She cracked my neck, and I heard it really crack. But I think, but I think I think we could. And like the little egg thing. Did you see that? The little egg thing that she was using to like. Massage that. my oh, it head. Was one egg, you're right, and one pepper. Yeah, yeah. She was using it to like massage the body. That was really nice. But it's kind of cool because like she throws like all the herbs away and all the eggs away. And I guess that's because like all the bad energy has been absorbed in those like plants and herbs. And then you don't want to touch that again. So she throws that all away and gets new ones for different people. So it looked a it, I don't, I don't think it was, it wasn't very painful at all. It was just like a nice massage. It was definitely. Your arm. Oh yeah, the arm thing was a, you know, yeah, no, it was totally fine. <laughs> Scale of an Ayurvedic Sri Lankan massage to a Turkish bath, it was definitely closer to like a mellow massage. It was good. It was really good. But, you know, nothing will ever top the, the pain bath. of a Turkish bath. So. Mika had a very painful Turkish bath yeah, many was, months ago. It's not a good idea. Not getting over it. Glad you did it? I'm glad you did it. Thanks for taking one to the team. Definitely right. check that out if you're in Cuenca. Yeah, and um, we are going to see you tomorrow, which will be like 10 seconds for you. We'll catch you tomorrow so we can explore Cuenca. All right, as promised, we are exploring Cuenca today. We should have said that the reason we did Olympia yesterday is because Olympias are only available certain days of the week. So if you are interested in getting one, they're only available Tuesdays and Fridays. So today we are headed into the main area, the main square here in Cuenca, where we're going to explore the city from. So one of the first things you'll notice about Cuenca that's different than other Ecuadorian cities is that it's got a very European feel. Like the buildings are completely different than what you would see in like downtown Quito. Cause like we're in downtown Cuenca right now and it looks like we could be like yeah. somewhere in Europe. Like, uh, yeah, like Spain. Yeah. It's beautiful. It really is a very beautiful city. I think they consider it like one of the most beautiful cities here in Ecuador. And once you come it's like, oh yeah, okay, I see why. It, it's strange. Like I don't feel like we're in Ecuador. Yeah, but it's strange. Here at like the call. Plaza del Cor Plaza? No, no, it's Parque Caledron, I think. <laughs> Parque Caledron. It's like the Plaza de Armas. I feel like every South American city has like a Plaza yeah. de Armas. But this is their version of it. And it, uh, it lives up to its name. This is the entrance to the Cathedral of Immaculate Conception, or commonly referred to here as just the new Cathedral of Cuenca. It's inside. We got some Bob Marley playing here on the side of the church and we got a whole bunch of other like kind of paintings, some sidewalk art. This person that does like that whole stay still kind of thing. I don't know what you call them. <laughs> Statue artists. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, we can go to the top. So we're gonna do that now. Okay, so to go up the cathedral and go check out like the domes from the top, pay two bucks. 
and then go up a bunch of stairs. <sighs> Can I blame the altitude? Even though we're not even at 3,000 meters. <laughs> Okay, we made it to the top. It was a lot of steps, but I think it's definitely worth it. You get an awesome view of Cuenca. Uh, we can, we're now looking down at the park that we were at earlier. Yeah, Parque Coledron, <laughs> something like that. That we still can't pronounce. Uh, and yeah, you just get a beautiful view of the whole entire city and then like even like the hills behind it. Yeah, it's honestly very beautiful up here, especially for two bucks. Well worth it to get a nice viewpoint. Yeah. And then behind us, you can get a really, um, close look at those like blue domes um, yeah. that look so beautiful. Yeah. I think there's a spot down, we'll see if we can get there later, where you can get a really nice picture of those blue domes. Mm. Um, but up here you can see like the detail and the artwork really closely. Yeah. And then funny enough, you can also see that uh, the cathedral isn't finished yet. Yeah. So right above us, <laughs> over there is where it ends. The original design actually has it going like a lot further up. Like yeah. this church doesn't even have its own like bells or anything like that. I cool. think they stopped construction for two reasons. I think they stopped it because A, money, and B, it wasn't super structurally sound. So they put this structure of, I think it's the Virgin Mary, up and oh, yeah. when they put it up, it actually like cracked a huge chunk of the building. And so I guess at that point it was kind of like, Whoa. We're just gonna stop right here, <laughs> good enough. Um, and it sounds like they're just leaving it kind of forever at this unfinished state. I mean, it's still gorgeous. You honestly probably wouldn't know it was unfinished if you hadn't read the sign. So we're right by the cathedral, just like around the corner. You can come and get awesome views of the cathedral from here, like the, the three beautiful domes. And honestly, the most important point is that this square here is absolutely stunning. There's like. An ice cream shop here. There's an Ecuadorian um, cafe, like a cafeteria you can eat at. It's absolutely beautiful, though. Like it's just worth the visit just to come in and see how how pretty it is. Cuenca, as you can see around me, is not like your traditional big, big city. It seems like more like a small town. It's got about 600,000 people. It's growing in terms of like attraction for international tourists. And we heard that there's a huge expat community here. In fact. In Cuenca, it's actually famous that you can get a ton of different beers from around the world, mainly because of how many expats that are living in this area and influencing the kind of beer culture here. So Cuenca is also known for a lot of like different handicrafts, and overall, the, the city itself has like a really nice, like cozy, warm vibe. It feels really, really nice to walk around in, and really safe too. Welcome to the famous flower market here in Cuenca. Apparently, it is one of the top 10 flower markets, um, outdoor flower markets in the world. You can get like pretty much everything here, and they're really, really affordable. But I think my favorite thing about being here is that it smells amazing. <laughs> Ecuador is like one of the biggest exporters of like flowers and especially of roses in the world. So the roses here are like super cheap. I think you can get like a dozen or so for like less than two dollars or something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. It's super cheap, so much so that like Ecuadorians don't find giving flowers like as a sign of like romanticness. Romantic <laughs> romance. Is the sign of like romance? <laughs> because like roses here in Ecuador are so cheap. Yeah. So you gotta go a little, a little better than roses. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that would be for an Ecuadorian. Probably chocolate. The chocolate. Oh yeah, the chocolate. Yeah, that's true. I'd take a chocolate. Oh, or I'd give a chocolate. I guess you know. It's 2020, so whatever. So good. Here in Cuenca, come to the flower market just for a smell. It's right next to the cathedral. The cathedral's literally right in front of us here. So easy to get to. Okay, so if you know the name of this ice creamy fluff stuff. Please tell us what it is. I read about it because we honestly really wanted to try it. We see it everywhere. Ecuadorians eat it all the time. It's really cheap. But I read that like as a foreigner, it's best to maybe stay away because the likelihood of getting sick is actually quite high for people with not great stomachs like me. Mika could probably handle it, but we are getting on a really long bus to Peru tomorrow, so I don't think it's, it's worth the risk. Um, but it's like a fluffy ice creamy thing and like people walk around with it constantly, but because it sort of sits outside, it's like not chilled and it's in the sun all day, apparently the risk of getting sick from it is fairly high. So I don't think it's worth it for us today, but it looks delicious. I don't know what it's called though. So if you know, please tell us. I take all of that back. Mika wants to try it. So he's gonna risk it. Let's take one for the team. So she told me the name, but I couldn't quite remember. 
Um, but uh, yeah, so she has like a few different flavors of the ice cream. And then she put coconut shavings on top. And then I think it's grenadine on top. Look at that. Mm. Let's hope this isn't a mistake before like 12 hour bus ride tomorrow, right? It tastes like I'm just eating like cre like whipped cream. It's like puffed. Puffed whipped cream with like strawberry flavoring, grenadine and like fresh coconut shavings. It's alright. It feels like it's got like like marshmallow -y. Like look, it's like sticky. Does it taste mar marshmallow? Kinda. We're actually so scared to try and get it. It's not as thick. Now there's a leaf in there, so. No, I think that's part of the coconut shell. Oh. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Pretty good though? Really good. Okay, we've hit a square. I actually have no idea what the square is called. The nice thing about Cuenca, honestly, is that all of the like things you want to see as a tourist are within a few blocks of each other. Like we've hardly walked anywhere today. We've seen so much already. So we're in like the main kind of like markety square. There's lots of different shops up. You can buy like clothes, all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, it's like this beautiful plaza with the, of course, a very iconic Cuenca sign, which is backwards right now. But this is the Cuenca sign. And from here. You can see where we came from. Like we really haven't gone far because that's the cathedral. It's really nice to like use it as a landmark. Like you always know where you are because you can pretty much always see the tops of the cathedral. And they're really set out because they're bright blue. Yeah, she's <laughs> so, like a she's such a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> such a tourist. Hey man, you just gotta own it. We've been on the you just gotta own it. We've been on the road for like over a year now, but still still feeling that tourist kind of yeah, personality yeah. you know i think i've actually i'm owning it more than ever before i just am <laughs> just a tourist okay so there's like lots of little shops here in stalls and if you ever want to come back home and tell everybody that you were in south america without actually saying that you're in south america you just gotta pick up one of these bad boys and um this is uh, definitely one Easy way to let everybody know that you just got back from vacation. You're in South America. <laughs> Actually, though, I, I obviously own one. I got one in Bolivia. In case you missed that video, had to get one. <laughs> this is Mercado 10 de Abril. No, 10 de Agosto. <laughs> it is a market with everything in it. It's like a really classic, typical Ecuadorian market. So it has like meat sections, fish sections, um, food like pre-made food sections, fruits and veggies, coffee and chocolate, like it has everything, which is very, very typical. Okay, so we've been at this market before and they have delicious food. I've had this Ornado before and we'll show you more in our next video where we do like a full Ecuadorian food tour, but this is something you have to get if you're in Cuenca. It's just as good as the other day. Amazing. What I love about eating at like Ecuadorian markets is that like all the stalls where people are like serving you food, it feels like you're tasting like a family recipe. Because like you've had this at a different place and it tastes a slightly different than it does today. And um, it's it's kind of neat because it feels like you're not walking into like an established restaurant or anything like that. It feels like you're walking into somebody's kitchen and trying their food. So definitely give it a shot if you can. Try different little bits of food at different places and maybe the same thing again at a different market because it'll probably taste very different. Anyways, I'm just about done. It's time for Nicole. First thing is actually coconut juice because I've seen so many people eating it around here on the market. Holy, I feel like I'm on a beach in Mexico. Hola. Gracias. And lettuce, sir. Honestly, I feel like I'm on a beach in Mexico. That is like, it's like dessert. Let's try this sumita first. So we had a, I think they called it a minta in Bolivia a while ago. It was delicious. So it's corn husk and some sort of corn mixture inside. I think the one in Bolivia that we had might have had cheese in it. I don't think this has cheese in it. Oh, it's a little sweet. I was not expecting that. Wow, it's quite yummy. It's, it is like literally like mashed corn mixed with, it almost feels like it's mixed with like, um, like, a, like made into a dough with like flour and some, I honestly think there's sugar in here. It's really sweet and very hot. 
we're not the only ones having a really nice lunch right now. That's one lucky dog. Straight from the market. Not even the leftovers. It's on a plate and everything too. Okay, so we hopped in a cab because we really wanted to check out this museum. It's called Musea Pumapango. I don't think we can take the camera inside, but I hear they're shrunken heads. We're gonna go take a look around and then check out the gardens, which are supposed to be beautiful. And now we can take you on. This is super cool. Their mouths and their eyelids have been sewn shut. Not their nostrils though. That's nice, I guess. This guy, his hair is in his face for eternity. What is this? He needs a haircut. <sighs> she like... Very stylish, shrunken head. Look at his feathers. It's nice. So, the museum, inside the museum is pretty cool. Um, really, we went there for shrunken heads because everything's written in Spanish or French, neither of which we understand. So we just really wanted to go see the shrunken heads. It's free to get in to public museums here in Ecuador, so it didn't cost us anything to go in. Um, so even though we don't understand anything, if you're like us and you don't understand Spanish or French, still worth a visit if you have a minute. Just to look at the very cool shrunken heads. I don't know if this is a good style. I think the kids now, they put their sweaters around their shoulders when they need to take them off. <laughs> so as you can see, we are outside now, and this is the museum that keeps on giving because not only do you get shrunken heads, but then you also get these cool ruins right, that's like right behind the museum. It's beautiful. Yeah. And at the bottom of the ruins is this awesome garden. So I think it's pretty awesome that this place is free, that you can walk around these gardens, check out those cool ruins behind us and just like hang out here honestly just come here for some peace and quiet go straight past the museum although you should check out the shrunken heads mm -hmm. and just relax out here because it is it is pretty peaceful i feel like you could like bring a picnic lunch and just spend an afternoon here. yeah probably it's could gorgeous. before we leave you guys in this video we want to let you know that we have some really exciting news we just started a patreon page so if you are interested in coming to check out all the extra sort of behind the scenes and like updated travel content what's coming up next for us go over to our patreon we'll link it in the description down below you can come and see and decide if you want to get involved we're also gonna do some like live Q and A's and we would just love to just meet more of you guys um, on our channel. Yeah, we'd be so excited. So thank you so much for coming around Cuenca with us today. We hope you've enjoyed this beautiful city. And we hope that this video was useful for you and planning your next trip to Cuenca. Mm -hmm. If it was, give it a like or maybe even a subscription. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, and we'll see you in the next one. We're actually, the next video you're gonna see from us is gonna be a full tour of food across Ecuador. And then after that, you're gonna meet us in Peru, which is where we are going tomorrow. Spoiler alert, the food in Ecuador is amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Frick. Oh no. It's a dead end to the ruins. How do you? It's been so amazing hanging out here and if we and we hope that if <laughs> shoot. You're doing great.